Uh, I came to Cleveland County in 1949. I married Tom Forney, who, and we lived in Longdale. Then he was connected with the Cleveland Mills there. And uh, uh, that's where we lived until uh, 79, when after Tommy was um, injured, by, he picked up a hitchhiker on his way back from Florida, and, and that's how he, why he's in a wheelchair now. But um, uh, I've been very impressed with Cleveland County, and I love it, and it is my home now. Has been for a long time, and I moved into Shelby and. Uh, um, the summer of 79 because our home in Lawndale um, was two stories and we had an extra uh, uh, bedroom on the uh, first floor but it wasn't convenient for Tommy and it was and we didn't and the bath was not convenient and so and he couldn't climb the stairs anymore so um, he we came into we found a house in Shelby that we could use and thought we would change to a a different one soon, but we didn't. We just have, have stayed in the same one ever since. And um, I taught school for uh, many years, and and I um, I have a uh, a daughter two years older than Tommy, and she lives in Mount Airy, and uh, where the um, Andy Griffith. Uh, <laughs> Theater is, and, and and her son is is uh, actually in, interested in movies, and he's he's in Los Angeles now and working on uh, on movies. Well, what has struck you about this area? You said you've enjoyed it. What is it about the character of this place that? Oh, the well, the friendliness of the people, of course, is one of the main things, and while. Um, I lived in, in Lawndale, as I say, for uh, the first uh, 30 years that I was here, but um, I knew a good many people in Shelby, and uh, uh, one of my husband's brothers uh, worked for Lily Mill, which is in Shelby, and uh, um, then uh, uh, his other brother worked uh, for Cleveland Mills, as my da husband Tom did. and. But they moved into Shelby or into um, the um, lake area of Shelby, not, not real, really into the city uh, before we did. But uh, after Tommy's injury, uh, we thought it would be more convenient to be in Shelby. And, be, and, and as I said, we needed to find a house that was more convenient for him. So that's really why we came into the city. But we had been involved. When you're in Cleveland County, um, you are involved with <laughs> with uh, Shelby all the time because the small the smaller areas, uh, old Kings Mountain maybe is, but the others are are so small that they have to come to Shelby for most everything. Well, let's talk about Lawndale for a bit and the and the mills. All right. Um, can you paint a picture for me of what this these ta this town was like, and was it typical of other mill towns, and was it a Company town. Well, it it was a company town, and they had a company store. And um, my my family was afraid I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't last here because I came from Durham, and I uh, um, I didn't know much about living in a small town like that. But I soon learned and and enjoyed it. The people were wonderful, and everybody seemed to want to help in any way they could and so I, I lived there while my my children were born and then I started teaching when Tommy started the school and uh, um, I taught in the school that was in Longdale too, it was Piedmont uh, school and I taught there until um, they closed that school and I moved into uh, moved to Dover school and taught there uh, for several years before we actually moved into Shelby. Mm. But um, What was Lawndale, well, paint a picture of it for me a little bit. Well, it was, um, the mill was the thing that was there, and, the, and uh, uh, there were a few other um, businesses and industries that, um, that catered to the, uh, the mill people, but it was it was typically a mill town, though, and uh, 
it's a small, small town, and uh, the people were all, everybody knew everybody else. And then, uh, um, Miss Forney, did the uh, railroad run, did the Lawndale dummy run when you were there? Uh, no, it had closed just before, they were, um, it closed in the early 40s, I've forgotten just exactly which year it closed, but, but um, it was not, but it was still being used some uh, for freight, I think, when I first went there, but there were no, no passengers, uh, but uh, they had, had passengers earlier. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I think the, the war sort of uh, finished closing it off. Yeah. And, uh, was this a place big enough to support other businesses and, 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 peop and other private enterprises that supported the mill workers? Or was it kind of a uh, company store and companies and, and the school and, and, and the Well, it was, it, it was a company, they had a company store, but uh, there were other places too. There were, had, uh, uh, there was a, um, a two other uh, small grocery stores, I think, besides the uh, company store. And um, there was a hardware store and, uh, um, and that's, and the, uh, that was about it, <laughs> that, uh, other than the, the people themselves. And they, uh, they were very loyal to the mill. And, uh, it, and it, it did well for a number of years, even uh, uh, after, during and after the war. But uh, it, um, it soon began to go down, though, after that. And I've, but my husband stayed on with them until um, even after we moved into Shelby. And he was old enough to retire, but he didn't retire until um, he was um, se 73 or four, something where along there. And uh, I continued to teach after we moved in for a couple of years, but uh, he needed to retire and uh, he was 10 years older than I was and, and so I uh, I stopped teaching uh, in in order to be with him more and um, what was the nature of your husband's work with the mill he was uh, 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 superintendent of the dying department of Cleveland Mills and uh, uh, he used to say he died for a living <laughs> uh, what can you describe some of the departments and some of the different ways the mill was organized? Now you know I can't do too much about it because I didn't, I never uh, went into the mill much. But uh, the uh, dye plant was separate, and they did the dye plant did work for Lily Mill, which was in Shelby, and uh, and for some others. But um, the mill itself uh, just uh, spun. Uh, Yarn. They did not. Uh, they did not weave cloth. It was. It was yarn. It's and they. Did you all go to church? Did yeah, you oh, the, church? yes. We had our uh, our church was a um, was it had been built by the mill and two um, denominations used it Methodist and Baptist, but. When I came there in '49, they were already making plans for the uh, the uh, uh, in the church for them to move out, and the um, and the Baptist, which w uh, we were members of the Baptist church, and and uh, they started their building a little on the edge of Longdale, started a church, and and um, um, the Methodists uh, started fairly close in, and they still they they there was a a house on just on the other side of the river. Uh, Longdale, you know, had a river that ran through it, and so the one side was completely mill. I mean, uh, everybody that uh, uh, there just about had some connection with the mill. But on the other side, uh, there were some uh, other uh, connections, and um, there was a uh, at one time there was a movie th theater there, and. Uh, uh, and we had a drugstore, and uh, um, that, and um, it was a store for fabrics, and, and uh, that's 
So, and, and as I, I mentioned, the hardware store, I think it was on the other side of the town. But, um, we, uh, we survived. We came into Shelby often, of course, then. While we had grocery stores there, there were, um, there were things that they didn't have. And when the uh, large uh, supermarket started in Shelby, while we came in uh, to shop. So, well. And you have, um, I, know, I know Mr. Four Lines, you know, who's just recently passed away, her was brother. Yes. And then he was a Duke graduate. Oh yes, yes. We there were three of us. We all went to Duke, and in fact, that was why my my dad had moved to Durham. He was a he was a traveling salesman for a, a grocery uh, uh, company, and uh, he wanted to uh, be where he didn't have to travel so much. So he began looking around and found this opening um, in uh, Durham, and but he had to be approved by. Uh, um, Bill Irvin, the uh, owner of the Irwin Mills there, uh, and because the building was belonged to them, and they, it, that store was not like a company store exactly, but uh, the mill kept it, it kept their hand in it, and, and uh, had to improve, approve of all of it. So, how, how did you meet your husband? My husband, I met him through his sister. <laughs> when I came back from uh, the Navy after World War II, I uh, went back and worked at Duke for a while, and then I got sort of restive, and I, <laughs> I, I changed and worked downtown in a finance company. And, but um, uh, my husband's sister was interested in uh, um, uh, theater work and uh, Durham was trying to get a little theater organized and I became interested in that and met his sister and became good friends with her and what, Minnie Anna or Manny, right? yes that was Minnie Anna yes that was she, Minnie she, Anna. Do, she, was a she worked there but she no she she finished at Meredith but she worked at the um, hospital there at Duke and uh, uh, so we had a lot of interests that were the same and uh, so she introduced me to Tom, and uh, uh, and that's that's how we met. <laughs> right. um, before we move on from the mills, uh, this we've been taught, we've been, we've been hearing about how the mills actually cultivated um, uh, community groups and musical groups, and sometimes even would pay for instruments or pay for you know to help people sort of stay entertained yes. when they weren't working. Yes. What can you tell me about that? Well, uh, they they did encourage uh, uh, that. I'm sure that a lot of that uh, was before my time, even that they uh, did that. And and uh, uh, during the war, um, they kept in touch with the with the people from the mill that were in service, and they um, uh, kept up with all that they did and, and encouraged them. And of course, um, my husband could not serve in the war. He had. Uh, the, they, they didn't take people with flat feet back then. <laughs> no. they, I think they take anybody now. But, uh, uh, but he uh, did not serve uh, in the military. But he, um, he was on the, uh, worked on the draft board, and uh, so he, he did a lot, that, all that he could to uh, help. But um, the, um, I, I'm really not too sure about how the, uh, me, the they did about the musical instruments, but I know that uh, uh, that they did uh, encourage that, and uh, they used to publish um, a little um, paper called um, the Hoover Rail, and uh, there was this uh, uh, little uh, cement wall near the um, the mill office that the people uh, gathered at, uh, at to play checkers, um, and. Uh, they, it was called the Hoover Hoover Rail, and uh, so they um, they published uh, that and sent it to all the people that were in service. Uh, they and and, uh, and they encouraged uh, them as much as they could, and then they took them back when they when the war was over. They they could, took them back, but um, well, in the fifties, then how would people? What, what was what did folks do for entertainment when they weren't working? Uh, they, um, well, 
that came into Shelby a lot. Of <laughs> uh, we did have a movie theater there for a while. I mean, we'd, it had come before that, and then it lasted for a while there. When I after I was went there, the movie uh, theater was there, and. Um, they get to, got together a lot for uh, playing do the instruments. I remember that, and uh, they, had, they used the um, auditorium at uh, Piedmont, which was the school that was right there, and uh, had a lot of uh, interest in um, musical programs when they would get them to come uh, there. But um, one last question on, on this. Um and this is something that I picked up in Nashville. In the, in the 40s and 50s in Nashville, so-called hillbilly music was something that many people participated in, but the, uh, more of the society people, if they liked it, they wouldn't let on. But that, well, and that I'd was true. I'd love to know whether there, was a, whether there was kind of a social class uh, divide between people who loved and participated in fiddle and banjo music, old time music, and those who said, <laughs> Well, I didn't know much about it. I'm not very musical at all. Uh, um, Tommy is the one in our family that is, uh, is musical, and I'm not. So I didn't uh, really take part in, uh, much in, in that. But, um, but that was true, that, uh, um, that, that people didn't think too much of the hillbilly music back then, you know, and uh, um, think a lot more of it now, I think, than they did uh, then. But, uh, you know, I would, that was during the, um, the swing era of music and the, and the big band uh, era. And those are the things that I remember more about music. And, and of course, when uh, uh, Tommy was small, he was, it got interested in the um, uh, guitar. Um, Ray um, Ledford. Ledford lived for, for a while, lived right across the street from us. And when Tommy got big enough to, to uh, mow yards for people, why, he would mow Ray's yard for, for, <laughs> for a lesson on his guitar. And that's how he got started uh, in it. And he's still, uh, he's still very fond of Ray Ledford and uh, uh, thinks he's done a lot of, for the music world. Well, let's talk about World War II and your time in the, with the Navy. I, tell me what you did. I... Well, I was in what we call communications, and uh, um, I was, a, you know, a lot of people don't know what the waves were, but they didn't, uh, women were not in the Navy at that time. And in 42, um, in the summer of 42, it was created by Congress, and it was uh, waves with uh, um, was uh, women appointed for volunteer emergency service. And uh, um, we, uh, but we were supposed, the idea was that we would replace a man uh, on shore so that they could, uh, the man could, could uh, uh, go wherever the Navy needed him. But we were given full um, naval status. We, we uh, I went for, uh, to, um, uh, Massachusetts, Northampton, Massachusetts for training. I had three months of training and uh, then after that I was commissioned an ensign and received full pay and full um, uh, everything that the, that the regular um, naval person did. And, uh, and when there were promotions, we, got, we were eligible for them also. I served in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, for two years, and uh, then went, then was transferred to Washington. I, at that, by that time, they were allowing some waves to go over to go to Pearl Harbor, and I um, asked for that, but I didn't get that. I got sent to Washington, and uh, worked in the ra in the naval building there. And got to work with communications. Did yes, with communications, we uh, we. Um, um, what I, what I did in uh, Charleston, we, I worked in the um, registered publication office, and w we issued the new uh, books to the uh, ships, to the 
uh, officers on the ship that were responsible for that. And when they when a ship would come into Charleston, they would their um, uh, 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 their officer that was in charge of the, of uh, of the of that why they would come to our office called the registered publication office and they and we would take their uh, old books and destroy them and um and issue them new ones so we were real busy with that but uh, uh i was not doing actual coding work there like i had had done in the um in training but when i went to um washington i was in the um in the office uh, for coding and and, and uh, decoding messages and occasionally we got to deliver them i got to deliver one to the white house several times and to the to the um, um, pentagon and the first time i went to the pentagon uh, i nearly got lost <laughs> <laughs> that was new for me, <laughs> and, and uh, I could see it over there where I, when I was going, I could see it, but I couldn't get on the right clover leaf <laughs> to get to it for a while. But I finally did. But when we occasionally got to take things to the White House, why well, um, that was we felt, we felt like that was pretty important. We didn't know whether it was or not, but we felt like it was. <laughs> the South has such. Always has a high percentage of people in the services, right? And consequently, part of our story is our patriotism mm -hmm. of of our people, whether it be Durham, Cleveland County, what? But this this desire, this patriotism, allegiance, and maybe if there's anything that you can relate to North Carolina or how you felt during the war, because I think that's a voice. Your voice needs to be heard along with other veterans of that period of time. I think Sissy's after that. that well, maybe we could ask sacrifices. what motivated you to uh, go that route. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I had I had gone to to uh, college at home because you know it was I entered the, uh, the depression was still going on, and I was the youngest of the three uh, children. And uh, while I my uh, my dad. Uh, assured me he could pay for for uh, Duke uh, at that time but uh, um, I didn't feel like it was easy for him and while I was in school uh, I got a job with uh, through the um, national um, you know, one of those um, I can't remember the name of it now but anyway um, one of Roosevelt's um, um, opportunities for people and for uh, students and so I uh, I got a job in the library uh, there and uh, of course I was always interested in uh, in libraries I was quite a reader when I as I was growing up and and uh, so I enjoyed that uh, job very much and when I graduated they offered me a job in the library although I did not have a um, uh, library training. I uh, I had worked there, and, and so uh, they offered me a job. And when my uh, offers from schools um, were about the same price, but they were farther away, and it would have cost would uh, cost a lot to live. And but I could stay at home and uh, and uh, have a little more money to uh, to spare. And I did that, but um, but I was. I was sort of restive, I guess, and wanted to do something. My brother had gone into the army, and uh, uh, so um, this opportunity came to uh, enter the waves. One of the uh, uh, people who was trying to um, recruit people had uh, was a friend of my sister's. Uh, who I think they had finished Duke at the same time, and. Uh, so uh, Ruth was telling me about it, and I got uh, uh, got interested in in that, and thought, well, maybe that was something that I could do. And and uh, uh, so we had to take a a, a day long um, exam that I took over in Raleigh, and and um, then uh, I was accepted, and didn't know where I would go, but uh, but they. Uh, 
as I say, they set me up to uh, Massachusetts for three months training. And then at that time, uh, they tried to put the waves back in their home um, naval district, if possible. Uh, they uh, see it was new to them to have <laughs> women, and uh, they just thought that was uh, was best. So uh, the headquarters for uh, was in Charleston uh, uh, for my district, and so that's why I was sent back to Charleston. And, um, and how and long were you with the waves? Uh, three years, three four years. I entered in the uh, December of uh, forty two and. Um, came out in 40, December of 45. Mm. And can you describe, um, the, in the wake of World War II, the years after, when we grew up, we're, we're taught that it was a time of prosperity and the country felt very good about itself and that obviously this yeah. incredible victory had taken place. And that's the era in, era in which you moved to uh, Cleveland County, 49, I think yes. you said, right? Um, was there still a, could you feel the, the after effects, the, uh, how, how long did that last? What did it feel like? How did it affect the community? Were there service people fighting their way back into the normal life? Yes, yes, that's, that's very true. And uh, um, uh, some uh, uh, had a hard time uh, doing it, and others um, got back into their, their regular routine uh, uh, quickly, but, um, uh, the, of course, there were not as many women coming back, but there were a lot, a lot of men. And my, as I say, my brother was just two years older than I am, and uh, um, he, uh, his friends coming back had a good bit of trouble, um, I think, uh, settling down and getting back into the things. Uh, it was quite different from the military, and and uh, they. And he came back, and he had been in banking, and he came back into banking, and but he too had a little trouble, and he went, uh, finally left banking for a brief temp period and went into um, with uh, into uh, the business world with my uh, brother-in-law, and uh, uh, but that they were really different and uh, that didn't quite work out, and so he was offered a job in uh, banking. Um, uh, Granite Falls, North Carolina, and he um, took that over, and it lasted there until he, um, he was close to 90. I forgot now exactly which, but anyway, he um, he did a good job with that bank at the time. Now, it's good. since then, it's gone down a lot, but but that's the economy of the whole <laughs> country. Not to, well, I was uh, going to ask you, when you got here in 49 and set up home, did you see a community in a county that was that was prosperous? Uh, yes, although cotton was uh, still a king you know, here. The same year as the boll weevil too. I think the boll weevil arrived about forty nine, didn't it? Yes. And yes. I was, was going to ask what the, what you remember of the impact on the cotton industry. Well, it it was it was quite an impact, and, and it started to really a little bit before I came, but but it uh, um, but it. It got worse uh, quickly, and uh, uh, began that people began losing their cotton fields. They just couldn't make a go of it, and yeah, and uh, and that uh, that was the thing that finally brought down the Cleveland Mills was the fact that uh, that uh, the boll weevil had just ruined the uh, the cotton industry here. Oh, there was still cotton grown, but, but on a much, much smaller scale than it had been, yeah. And How long did that crisis last? Well, I guess it's still going on. <laughs> the, uh, Cleveland County doesn't grow the uh, amount of cotton. You know, at one time they were um, well known for uh, cotton and, and uh, grew more than, than any place else around, but uh, uh, it, it's, it's never going back to that, of course. And uh, the mills began closing, and uh, uh, and some uh, some closed quicker than others. But uh, the the mill at Longdale, as I say, just uh, did yarn. They didn't do uh, fabric. And then they, um, while they were still going, they uh, went into uh, doing uh, 
uh, backing for um, vinyl. Uh, vinyl was being used as covering for um, um, chair seats and uh, a lot of different things then, and, and uh, uh, Cleveland Mills got into that. But, um, and Lily Mills here in Shelby, um, they made cloth and they did a lot of different things, but they saw the effects too of, uh, of um, the uh, cotton not being king anymore. <laughs> and, uh, At this point, did the Lawman Mill ever have a New York office? Uh, you know, I'm not sure now. Uh, did they go to New York or did? Uh, yes, yes, I think they did. They, But they didn't do as much as uh, Lily Mill did. Now, you know, those mills were connected, I mean, and uh, the uh, Shanks had owned both of them. And, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, Lawndale did not do as much, and that I guess because they only th did thread rather than um, fabric. Uh, but um, but then when they got into this backing for uh, vinyl and all, why uh, that kept them going for a while. And uh, uh, but fi uh, finally, uh, other things came along that that. Uh, it just sort of destroyed the industry, really. Can I ask one more question? Sure. We have about a minute and a half left. Okay. Just uh, since you're such a fabulous reader, um, what's your take on Thomas Dixon and W.J. Cash? Oh, <laughs> well, um, uh, I enjoy uh, anything that, uh, with a little history to it, and uh, so I uh, in enjoy that it's you know it's not uh, as easily read as uh, as other things but uh, I, I enjoyed that and um, and I enjoyed knowing about um, about the county that I'm living in now and uh, the year I believe it was the year before I came that um, mm -hmm. um, we had the uh, polio victim in Lattimore, you know, that lived in the iron lung for so long. And uh, uh, that w w was an uh, interesting um, part of, of the, our history here. And, and uh, she's, uh, she's just come back into prominence, I re read in the paper just yesterday. Yeah. It's being reissued now. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's... Uh, that's real in interesting, and my my daddy was in a line. And the reason I was most interested, my uh, daddy was in an iron lung uh, at Duke Hospital for several months. Uh, he had uh, um, um, now you got me. I can't remember what he had, uh, but anyway, it his was connected with um, uh, muscles spasms and. Uh, he couldn't uh, couldn't breathe uh, uh, on his own, and uh, he was put into uh, an iron lung for about uh, 12 weeks, and then after that uh, into a, a rocking bed that kept him going for a while. But uh, he didn't didn't last too long. Is yeah. there any other way in which you would say you could you could you could observe the the county evolving over the last three or four decades? Are there any other big trends that you've seen? Well, uh, for some, I, I never have known exactly why, but the uh, southern area of the county seemed to grow uh, more than the uh, northern end, of, and uh, um, that was why they closed Piedmont School, because uh, they, uh, uh, the, that, that area of the county just hadn't grown as much, and, and we always felt like they didn't try very much for the schools <laughs> there, but uh, anyway, um, it they did uh, did close, uh, but they uh, it's it's prospering now though I think I think it's doing a good, doing real well though uh, now. Well, Mr. Forney, did, did Piedmont close prior to uh, integration? Did it close before the schools integrated? Did what close? Piedmont school. Did it oh. close before no, before they integrated, no, uh, no, it, it did not. It closed uh, soon after that, but uh, um, but 
Um, I had uh, children in my class at, at Piedmont. Uh, that, uh, it started off slow. I, the first year, I had only one black uh, student in class, and then it, they gradually, it was because they didn't want to, they to come uh, there, but uh, they gradually uh, came. and. Uh, um, and by the time I came to um, Dover, why, uh, why I, did, I had a number of uh, black students in my class, and and some good students too. Yeah. Well, what, is, now, what is your what, you do you, what, are, what are your observations looking back on the integration in the in, in Cleveland County? Shelby? was it pretty smooth? Was it rough? And you were right there teaching. Yes, and uh, and we didn't ever have any uh, any problems with it really, and um, but um, we we noticed that w at, at first that the the uh, children were not as well prepared. They uh, they uh, the black schools had not uh, done as good a job, or they and I don't know whose fault that was, but they uh, but they had not done as good a job. And and the teachers really were not as well prepared either because we began getting uh, uh, teachers, you know, and uh, uh, black teachers, and um, so, some were, were pretty good, but we, we could tell a difference. They were not as well prepared, I didn't think. But of course, that's that's changed. That and it changed quickly, really. After uh, after the very first, it, it changed quickly. They uh, they worked hard, I think, to to bring the their teachers up to par. It's it's safe to say that that's probably the biggest single social change that that's happened in in most parts of the country over the last fifty years. Yes, it was one that almost came. You know, was almost uh, pushed from the outside world. Right. How do you think Cleveland County handled it in general? Well, I think Cleveland County ha handled it very well. I don't, I don't think we had many real problems. And uh, um, uh, now, my uh, Tommy was at Shelby High. I sent my children into Shelby High rather than the uh, local schools because uh, they were in transition then. Uh, uh, Burns was being built and, and they were, uh, it just wasn't uh, as good, I didn't quite think. <laughs> I didn't quite think it was quite as good. But, um, but I think they're excellent schools in the county now. But um, my son had two aunts who were uh, considered uh, um, top teachers at Shelby High, and I felt like they ought to have a chance to uh, have have them, and so um, we sent my daughter and, and, and later my son into Shelby High, and um, at the, so they, they experienced um, integration there while in the high school while I was experiencing it experiencing it as a, as a teacher in the lower grades in uh, in Piedmont and um, Ms. Thorne, yes did, how did the kids accept integration as compared to the parents well children accepted it fine well, uh, I didn't have any problems really with the with children one or two maybe that uh, whose parents insisted that they uh, not uh, drink after them or not, I mean, at the water fountain or something, and, and were, but, um, but not, not very much. It, it, uh, I think children accepted it fine, and, and if they could hit a baseball or something like that, <laughs> that was fine. Uh, they uh, enjoyed playing with them, you know. 